Hey guys, today we're going to learn all about scatter plots in ThinkCell. We'll start by looking at how you know whether a scatter plot is right for your data, and then we'll go into how to use a scatter plot in ThinkCell. We'll cover things like groupings, trend lines, petitions, and much, much more. That sounds good. Let's jump into it. Now, scatter charts are used when you have two dimensions that are both quantitative in nature and you want to compare the relationship between the two. There is an optional piece as well, which is you can actually add a third dimension as long as that dimension is categorical or qualitative. And that's denoted by either the color of the point or the um, shape of the marker. So the first thing we'll do is add a scatter chart using ThinkCell. To do that, we click on Insert, Elements, Scatter, and we'll drop the scatter chart in. So here's our default scatter chart. You can see there's already some example data in there. So what I'll do now is I'll replace that with some real data. And there we go. So now we'll just quickly reformat this so it's a little bit easy to see. Okay, it's a little easy to see the data in the scatter chart now. One thing I'll mention in the beginning is that, as you can see in some of the data points towards the bottom here, it's a little bit tricky to understand uh, which label is associated with which point. So for example, Arts and IT Telco are both next to this point here. ThinkSol automatically calculates the what they think is the most optimal place for the label. But if you don't agree with that, you can actually move them manually. So for example, IT and Telco, I highlight and drag here, and you can see it's included a kind of arrow or pointer to the data point associated with that label. So as I said in the beginning, at the moment, we're comparing the data across two quantitative dimensions. The first is number of businesses, which is on the Y axis, and the second is growth per year, which is on the X axis. Here, we're looking for a relationship between the two, and there seems like there might be some relationship there, but maybe not a very strong one. But what if we want to compare on another dimension? So to do that, we double click on the chart and you can see two additional columns. The first one is size. Now this is used to build a bubble chart. And if you want to learn more about a bubble chart, as I said before, we have a separate tutorial on that, which I'll link in the description below. More importantly for this tutorial, we're looking at the group category. So we can now add in multiple groups into our data set and we can label them however we want. I'll pause here briefly. One great trick about ThinkCell is that it goes down the list of groups. Anything that's not labeled is considered part of the last group it sees. So for example, here I, can, I haven't labeled Agri or Arts with a group, but because the, the most recent previous group was not priority, it'll consider both of these to be not priority. Same applies for any of the other groups. So again, Retail here, which doesn't have a group, the last one that ThinkCell sees is not priority, so it will apply that same label to retail. Okay, grouping's done. You can see here that the color scheme is a little bit tricky. You can't quite see the difference between the two groups. Now, there's a couple of ways to change the color of the data points. We can multi-select all of the data points and try and change the color. However, the, the real short way to do this is to insert a legend and change the legend color. I'll show you how to do that now. So we right click, add a legend, and we'll change priority to a red color, and we'll leave not priority as green. You can use the same method to change the marker type. So again, right click on the group, and you can change circle to diamond, and you can change the size as well. But I'll change it back. Now we'll add a trend line. So to add a trend line to a scatter chart, right click on the chart, and click on add trend line slash partition. This adds just a plain line to the chart. To turn it into a trend line, click on the line, and then from the drop down, select all groups. So now we can see some evidence that there is a small relationship between number of businesses and growth per year. It's currently set to a trend line for all of the data points. So we can't actually change linear to anything else like exponential or power. But if we do select one of the groups and I'll select not priority, we can look at other types of our relationships. So in this case, it allows us to do exponential. Similarly, if we were to change to priority, 
there are even more options available, for example, power. So these can be useful when you're trying to illustrate a relationship between two dimensions. Another cool thing you can do with trend lines is turn them into partitions or group. So first thing you do is turn this back into a linear line. And now you can drag the anchor points to different parts of the chart. So for example, I've dragged it to the top and I'll drag this anchor point to the bottom. And now you can see we've separated the not priority industries from our priority industries. And then we can click on the line and change the fill color to red. So this is filled underneath the line to be red. So that's the wrong side of the line in our case. So we'll right click on the line and click on the button here which says flip filled side. And there we go. Now I've filled the other side of the line. Now, as you can imagine, you can do some pretty cool things with this, and it's really useful for highlighting groups of data points that are relevant for any particular reason. So I guess the only thing to mention here is you can have multiple trend lines, multiple partitions, and multiple fills on a single scatter chart. And I'll quickly show you that now. So here you can see I have a couple of partition lines with a fill in between them both. Not the most beautiful slide in the world, but it does illustrate how you can use partitions and fills in scatter charts in Thinkcell. If you like that and you'd like to learn more about how to build compelling slide decks using Thinkcell and PowerPoint, please check out slidescience.co. We have a full course that covers everything from how to build the logic behind your slide decks all the way to how to use Thinkcell to make really compelling slides. So that's it. That's how you use a scatter plot in Thinkcell. If you have any questions or comments, please drop it in the comment box down below. Hope that was useful.